what are the best settings for this monitor? And by best settings, I mean the settings which I use during the review. They satisfy my colorimeter targets. They work on my unit and according to my own preferences. So this is gonna vary between units and individual preferences. These are just a suggestion. So the first thing to focus on is the preset. They're under game settings. You've got game mode. I'd recommend leaving this off because that gives you the maximum flexibility. FPS, for example, well, by default, that's quite bright. It appears to apply a sharpness filter, which you can't actually control as well. It also blocks off quite a few settings, such as shadow control, the game color setting, overdrive, you can't even just overdrive, it's locked at weak, which is odd. And the whole of the color setup menu and picture boost is also grayed out. So it's just very restrictive. And you don't get an improvement to input lag just because you're using game mode, by the way. So I don't think that there's any particular reason in that respect to use a game mode. RTS makes different adjustments and has similar settings locked off. Same with racing, different adjustments again, lots of restrictions. Gamer 1, it's less restrictive, although the color setup menu and picture boost is still disabled. And there's Gamer 2, makes different adjustments and locks off your color setup as well. And Gamer 3, more of the same. So yep, definitely would just recommend leaving this off for the best balance to the image and also the ability to actually adjust everything you might want to adjust. I also made some adjustments in color setup. So I changed the color temp from the default of warm to user, which allows you to adjust the color channels. And I changed red to 46, green to 50, blue to 50. These just worked on my units and according to my colorimeter achieved a well-balanced 6,500K white point with good neutral green channel. Again, this is gonna vary between individual units. The other thing I changed was brightness. I reduced that to 25, which got to my usual target of around 160 nits. AMD FreeSync, that's your adaptive sync toggle, so you'd need to have that set to on if you want to use NVIDIA G-Sync compatible mode, as well as AMD FreeSync. And when you do that, low input lag is actually greyed out, but it's set to on and it does have low input lag. I recorded a nice low input lag with AMD FreeSync set to on. So if you don't want to use VRR, you can have that set to off, then just make sure low input lag is also set to on. There's no disadvantage to having this set to on versus off. You might as well just leave it on. As I've said, with AMD FreeSync enabled in the OSD, you can expect low input lag either way, and you can't access or change the low input lag setting. It's basically just set to on automatically. So as a reminder, game mode set to off, brightness is set to 25. I've made some changes to the color channels. AMD FreeSync is enabled. Overdrive, I like to set to medium. That's just my preference, but I explore this in detail in the review. I can see a reason that you might want to use strong and depending on the refresh rate, perhaps even weak. So there are just a couple of other settings to be aware of that you may want to use or change depending on your own preferences and the particular model you have. I say that because there's a color gamut setting it's set to panel native, which will use the full native gamut, but there's also sRGB and DCI P3. Now on my unit, they do absolutely nothing. So yes, it looks different on panel native, but the only reason for that is that I've made my own adjustments elsewhere. But by default, if you've got everything set to the same color temp mode and everything else set up the same, then on the BK model, this appears to do absolutely nothing, this particular color gamut toggle. So just leave it on panel native. On the non-BK model, which is sold in the US, for example, then it does actually have an sRGB emulation setting. So if you want to use sRGB emulation for a more toned down look, more appropriate within the sRGB color space, then you can set this to sRGB. Just be aware that if you do that, you can't access the color channels, you can adjust the brightness, you can't adjust the contrast or the gamma mode. Speaking of the gamma mode, that is something which I left on gamma one, which worked on my unit. Gamma two is lower. So gamma one on mine it averaged 2.3, Gamma 2, that averaged 2.1, I believe. Gamma 3 was higher, I think it was 2.5 or 2.6 or something like that. So if you want a deeper look to things, try Gamma 3. If you want to raise details, for example, have a bit more visibility in darker areas, perhaps try Gamma 1, all according to your own preferences. But Gamma 1 was most accurate, and most appropriate on my unit. There's also a local dimming setting. I set that to off when I'm on the desktop. As I explore in the review though, it does have its uses when you're viewing dynamic content, such as games and movies. And I'd recommend setting this to strong if you want to be using it. The other adjustments I make still apply when you're using local dimming, except for the brightness. So at 25, things are gonna look generally dim. They're gonna be dragged down a lot. So you probably want to increase this. So if you wanted to use a brightness of 25, you might want to increase this to 50, or actually my preference was 60, just in general. This will make some things quite a bit brighter than with the setting disabled and set to 25. 
also will make some things nice and deep. It gives you a good contrasty look without being too extreme. Again, this is all explored in the review. Moving in now on HDR, there's an HDR mode setting. This is actually an HDR emulation mode if you're using the monitor in SDR. So you've got an SDR signal. It's not actually being fed an HDR signal, the monitor. It applies a weird sharpness filter. It oversaturates things. It upsets the balance. If you happen to like how things look, then feel free to use this. Game has the weakest sort of effect in terms of the extra saturation. Movie's a bit stronger and Vivid stronger again. So depending on the level of oversaturation you want, then you could use this. You can actually see it quite clearly with this desktop wallpaper that your shade variety is affected when you're using this. Things sort of get crushed together. That's because it's not expanding the gamut itself. It's just pulling shades closer to the edge of the gamut. If you feed the monitor an HDR signal, so I've now enabled HDR in Windows, you'll see quite a bit of the menu is greyed out. And the local dimming setting is set independently for SDR and HDR. So it remembers that I like this set to strong under HDR. And if you're using local dimming under HDR, you don't have control of brightness. I would absolutely recommend using local dimming and I would recommend setting it to strong as I cover in the review under HDR. There's also an HDR setting. Display HDR, HDR game, HDR movie, HDR vivid. I'm just gonna quickly fire up a game under HDR to talk a little bit about these settings. So I would definitely recommend sticking to display HDR. The other settings, the first of all, it's like under SDR, they all have a sharpness filter. They also oversaturate with movie having a bit of a stronger effect in that respect and vivid a stronger effect again. So even if you're using HDR game, there's some oversaturation, but the sharpness filter I find pretty ugly and unnecessary. Things really do look over sharpened and you don't have any control of that. Either way, my recommendation is setting this to display HDR, which will give you the best balance, the most appropriate and intended look. I could also give you a super quick demonstration of the local dimming settings. Again, I said recommend strong. That's because it's the most dynamic. It will give you the best edge and contrast. It's all explored in the review in more detail. With it set to off, you can adjust the brightness, but things look really dim and odd unless you increase this significantly. And if you have this increased significantly, the backlight is just used as one unit. So the dark areas can't be dimmed. The contrast just isn't there. Again, all explored in the review. The contrast isn't anywhere near as strong as it should be or could be with the mini LED solution used, I should say. Set to low, that uses the mini LED solution, but it's less dynamic than medium and that's less dynamic than strong. So there's just an edge in contrast with strong, which means that the zones will be happy to dim down a bit more, for example, for some of the zones, whilst others will remain nice and bright. So it really just allows you to get the most out of the 336 dimming zone, so-called mini LED backlight solution.